Hello, hello, hello. Sharon Horn Elstrom here with Painkillers, our free 30 day painkillers challenge. Today is day 24, day 24 already. How are you feeling? How is your pain level from day one to today? Have you just done a check, a check in with yourself? Have you found any one of the particular exercises or challenges up to today particularly helpful? If you have, please let me know. Share in the comments below because I know we're all different. What works for me might not necessarily work for you at all. That's why I'm sharing with you all of my favorite things, all of the things that have given me the most relief with my chronic pain over the last 37 years. And you know, some of them are things like the one I'm gonna share today that I just was introduced to last year, but it's made such a profound difference on me that it is now in my top 30 things that I do all the time and on a really regular basis to make me feel better, to help reduce my chronic pain and give me my life back. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be able to get your life back, get back to a sense of normal so that doing the things that everyday people do, the everyday things are the ones that I find the most frustrating. Being able to do those without it being such a burden or such a hardship. So how'd it go yesterday? Did you discover your primary question? Did you discover the question that's been driving you up into this point of your life? And maybe you discovered that you've had a couple of different questions over your lifetime. I know that my primary question when I was a, a younger child or a girl was, was really, are you friendly? And I was all about me making friends and relationships and interacting with people when I was little. And I don't know when that changed, but probably about 15, when I was about 15 then, my primary question became, you know, how do I survive in this environment? Because we were in junior high and high school and that's just a, a really interesting time for most of us because there's so much division of personalities and there's so much power struggle and games going on at that time that that probably was my primary question. I don't know, I haven't thought about that a lot. But then as I entered my adult life and had my own businesses, I shared WTF was my primary question. And that primary question was entirely ill-suited toward what I really needed to be doing and wanted to be doing in my life, up to and including a sudden cardiac arrest. So that particular question was totally contributing to my chronic illness and my chronic pain. So I switched it to, what am I creating now? And what am I creating now is a much more empowering, it's a much more fun question to operate my life on. Now today I'm gonna to share with you an, an exercise. It's about balance and balancing your energy. And I learned it from a really good friend of mine named Cheryl. And she is an incredible woman, a natural healer and nurse. And she's got a huge background in health sciences and all of the different ways and different healing modalities. But she taught me last year when I was having a really bad flare, this balancing technique for balancing your energy. Now, I'm the first to admit that as far as life balance and work-life balance, I kind of think that's a lot of crap. I think depending on what we're trying to achieve in our lives, women for sure are not necessarily gonna always be balanced. We strive for balance, but to expect our life to be balanced, it's a total unrealistic expectation and it leads to worry, stress, doubt, fear, anger, anxiety, frustration. All of the things that we want to avoid because those emotions totally add to our, our experience of chronic pain, chronic illness, chronic anything. And chronic stress is, you know, to me personally, is one of the biggest impactors on my experience of chronic illness and chronic pain. I discovered that stress in most ways, shapes and forms, and you know, we could get into a whole discussion about what creates stress and why do some people feel more stressed than others and why do some people get motivated by stress while others are debilitated by stress. You know, it's the same as, you know, why do some people eat a ton when they're stressed, like me, or like my mother-in-law, eat nothing when you're stressed. We're all different, so we have to figure out what works for us. So for me, I've, I've believed and, and thought over the years that I cannot be balanced. When I was raising my children, it was a lot more important that I spent time raising my children and loving them and helping them with their activities and encouraging and, and building my family relationship than it was for me to be working all the time. Although I will admit I was an epic failure at that because I worked all the time. So 
that's part of why I was stressed and burnt out and hurting all the time was because I was trying to do it all and be balanced and it is not possible and it it leads to all kinds of physical issues and ailments we need help with things and a lot of us I know women for sure I am terrible at asking for help even now after all the things I've been through and all the things I've learned it's really hard for me to ask for help I don't know where that comes from it's just because I like to be independent and bossy I guess but I'm getting better but it is still a struggle for me to ask for help because I grew up thinking I should be able to figure it out I should be able to do it all myself and that's again another super unrealistic expectation that just leads to problems leads to excess stress leads to me putting way more pressure on myself than is necessary so balance I'm working on balance obviously and I will continue to work on balance and as I've moved into different phases of my life and of my businesses and of my health balance is becoming easier and easier it's easier for me to but I would say my life still isn't balanced I'm definitely not balanced in the relationship department I'm a little off balance in the financial department I'm medium balanced in the health department so let's just admit it my balance sucks I actually I don't know if y'all have ever done that but we have this uh, I can't remember what I think is it a Wii we fitness device that you stand on and it it's a like a video game and it tests your balance and I had like I five years ago I had like the balance of a 72 year old woman not very complimentary but I don't personally have terrific physical balance and maybe that's because I don't have terrific emotional balance Ooh, aha moment there people I might I might have discovered my main core issue there but I and, and I could say I could blame my eyes because I can only see out of one eye so maybe it has something to do with vision but even if I close my eyes I don't have good balance so that excuse is now out the window but today I want to teach you and share with you not teach you because I'm not an expert in this but share with you a modified version of what's called a balance tap and it's just one of the tapping exercises and all you do is you take two or three fingers of your right or left hand I'm right-handed so I use my primary hand and you tap in a counterclockwise circular motion on your chest right below your collarbone and as you're tapping you are going to repeat something that is meaningful to you perhaps your affirmation for today perhaps a just an empowering statement that you like to say or you can just use it as time to breathe and calm your mind you don't have to repeat anything in your mind what I do is I have a series of six affirmations that same ones I have hanging on my bathroom mirror that I use and I use that as my my tapping sequence so when I do this activity I do a circle of each of my six sayings I just happen to have six and sometimes I throw in an extra one like my day what I want to focus on but it, it's different every day because I feel different every day so for example you're just gonna tap in a counterclockwise position and again how many times you tap in each spot do what feels right for you I usually do about seven because I repeat the saying that I'm repeating in my mind for a count of about seven taps it takes me and I do that over and over again as I do my circular motion so I'm gonna tap and I'm saying in my mind I am loving experiencing perfect health I have perfect health in all areas and aspects of my life and then I just move around in a counterclockwise position and I also do this in about let's see one two you want to do it in at least four points so right here by your collarbone right to the right and the directions say make sure you tap, don't tap in a circular motion below your nipple so that would be a long way down so but right about right about a little bit below your collarbone is where you want to start and have the main point be and then again I am experiencing perfect health in all areas and aspects of my life I am experiencing perfect health in all areas and aspects of my life I am experiencing perfect health in all areas and aspects of my life I love experiencing perfect health in all areas and aspects of my life now I will do this with my eyes closed and sometimes I'll add more points if I feel like I really need to work on that thing maybe I'll tap like in eight places around in the circle but the point is to do it in a circular motion and just either calmly breathe and think about what it is that you want or 
whatever. But it doing this over and over again, and I do it and repeat those affirmations because it makes me do it longer. Otherwise, I would tap one time in one circle and I would be done and move on to the next thing. And part of balance for me is slowing down, getting into the present moment, and actually focusing on what I want. So that slows it down for me and makes me actually tap and do it. And I probably totally meet X to that explanation. So if you'd like, comment somewhere on this and I will actually attach better instructions than what I just shared. But that's how I have taken this strategy and made it my own. And that's how it works for me and that's how it's the most powerful for me. So tapping is another strategy that you can use to reduce your pain. And if I'm having a really bad time or a flare up in my hips or something, I will breathe into and relax and use that strategy, using just that little tapping strategy to focus on perfectly healthy, my ability to, to walk and perform and do what I want to do with, and I don't say pain, remember, I'm never saying or focusing on what hurts or the pain. I'm always imagining perfect health, easily walking. I might say I'm loving walking in the park with ease or whatever it is, whatever works for you or whatever it is on you that needs the most attention. Because usually what hurts the most on us is what needs the most attention. And all of those things are connected to other parts of us. So if my hips hurt, it's got something to do with support and I'm not feeling supported. So I really need to ask myself, in what areas of my life do I not feel supported? And that will lead to all different things that I might want, want to explore, but if I don't explore them, my hips are gonna keep hurting. So that's it for today, try the tapping. The challenge today is for you to just do this. Try this tapping exercise. I would say, you know, you're probably gonna to have to try it a few times to figure out what is most comfortable and what gives you the most relief and helps you feel better. But do it at least once today. And I had, I'm had i supposed to be doing, according to Cheryl, it like five or six times a day. And I would say I've maybe done it five or six times a day, maybe five or 10 times. I am not very good about doing it. I am good at doing it in the morning when I first wake up before I get out of bed and at night when I first go to bed but that's only two times a day. So I know for me, I just have to figure out what feels better. And I'm like, I wonder how I'd feel if I actually did it five or six times a day. Maybe that's my challenge today, is I'm gonna do it five or six times today. So you go out, do it once, and I will see you tomorrow. Have an awesome day, bye.